I was studying last Tuesday quite a bit during the day, reading and scriptures and just trying to feel my way for what God had for us this week, this Sunday. Went to bed Tuesday night after all that reading and all that study, and I just didn't feel like that I had what I was supposed to have and what direction I was supposed to go for today. And, you know, I spent quite a bit of time trying to hear from the Lord and and that's kind of a tricky thing sometimes, trying to hear from the Lord. I think all of us um, sometimes find it not always easy to be tuned in. And it's, it's somewhat of a mystery how it works at times. But then when I was driving Wednesday morning here early, I was cold and I had to stop and buy diesel. I was... Um, trying to get here to the office to be here by 8.30. And as uh, soon as I hit the Lee County line coming this way, I, I wasn't, you know, wasn't meditating or praying. I was just trying to get here. And I felt the Lord just, bam, talk about enduring. Talk about how to endure God's dream and God's vision for your life. And so we were going to be teaching on Joseph that night, Wednesday night. And you just, you have no, you got to look at it. Look in Genesis and see how much space is taken about the story of Joseph. I mean, I mean if God gives a little verse of Scripture, you got to pay attention to it. When he gives that much space and words to an account of Joseph and how he worked through Joseph and Jacob and the boys' lives and how they all interplay together. It's an amazing story. But I felt God say, talk about how to endure God's dream and God's vision that he puts in your heart and your life. And that's what I spent the rest of the week putting together and putting it together for you this morning. Father, I thank you for how you've already spoken to us and how we've been inspired by missions and those that are serving in the front lines. We thank you for Tony and Rose. And Father, we just pray that you'll anoint what you have for us from your word today and speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Enduring your God-given dreams. Uh, one of the things I always do when I start with a subject, I go to the concordance and I look at all the scriptures that have to do with endurance. And man, when I open up the commentary, there's a whole page. I mean, a lot of references to endurance. Tremendous to interplay with the story of Joseph. Now, the story of Joseph, uh, the account has to do with a famine that was coming to God's covenant people. And God had a plan how he was going to save and spare his covenant people through a time of famine that was going to hit. And this was the, the story. This was part of the dream of how God was going to do this great miracle of saving his covenant people. I'm here glad today you're one of God's covenant people. I'm here glad you've been grafted in and you're one of God's covenant people. And God, 24-7, is thinking about how he can take care of you, uh, Kim, as God spoke through you today. 24-7, God is looking after his covenant people, cares about his covenant people. And Genesis 37-5 says, One night Joseph had a dream. God wants to speak to us. He speaks to us through his word all the time. 
He speaks to us sometimes through circumstances, through many different ways, but He speaks also through dreams and visions. Something that I have lived by for an awfully long time, and I don't know where it came from, but I, I have lived by it and I have operated by this principle. What God inspires, He desires. And what He desires, He brings to pass. God's not going to inspire something in you. God's not going to give you a dream and a vision for something that He's not into. What He inspires us to do, He desires for us to do. Come on, say amen. amen. God's not going to inspire you to do something that He doesn't desire for you to do. And if He inspires you and desires for you to do it, He will help you and work through you to bring it to pass. Amen? How many are glad that there's so many times in the Scriptures it says, and it came to pass? I'm really glad things come to pass. Some things we're glad they come to pass, and some things we're glad they come to pass. If you get the my pun there. Some things you just can't wait to come to pass, and sometimes you're so glad they just finally come to pass, right? Joseph had a God-given dream, or we would refer to it as a word from the Lord. But Joseph had ten other brothers who walked with God at best half-hearted. Jacob, their father, knew his sons were bound in idolatry. In Genesis 35, you read about this idolatry. And verse 1 of chapter 35, And God said unto Jacob, Arise, and go up to Bethel, and there dwell. Bethel means the house of God. And then Jacob, verse 2, said unto his household, to all who were with him, his sons included, put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments. Listen, Jacob knew he was going to meet God and he didn't want his sons and his household to be wearing earrings and false gods hanging off their ears and off of their bodies. Look down to verse uh, 4. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hands and, on, and all their ear, earlings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them. If you're going to go to the house of God, don't bring a bunch of idols with you. And what is interesting, Joseph had ten brothers who were half-hearted in their walk with God. We here see in verse chapter 35, verse 2 and 3, they had idols. And when they went to Bethel, they didn't have much of a change of heart. Joseph did. Joseph had an experience with God. Jacob had an experience with God. But these sons, these ten other brothers of Joseph, went right back to their own rebellion, become full of hate and envy and strife. I tell you, there's a scripture in the Old Testament, I can't think where it is, says they come and go from the house of God, but they're buried in the cemetery of sinners. They come and go from the house of the Lord, but they're wound up buried in the cemetery of sinners. In a verse, verse, it just came to my mind. We don't go to the house of God and bring our idols with them. We get rid of those idols. God works in our lives. I'm very glad God's working in your life to get rid of any of the idols that we have in our life. Joseph was something different. There was something different about Joseph. His repentance was from the heart. And God could speak to him. God gave Joseph a dream in which in that day we, we talk about hearing from the voice of God. Synonymous. God still speaks today. God, I mean, bless God still speaks. The prophet Joel says in the last days there will be an increase in dreams and visions. Somebody say amen. amen. How many believe God wants you to have a dream and wants you to have a vision? Amen. 
A church must have a dream and a vision greater than its memories. Don't know who said it, because I would give credit, but it's been said over the years. A church must have a dream and a vision greater than its memories. And it goes like this. A church doesn't have a future if its memories are greater than its dreams and visions. You can talk about the yesterday all you want, but you got to start talking about what God's doing now and what He wants to do in the future. Somebody say amen. amen. 29, 18 of Proverbs, without a vision, without an ongoing revelation from God, people perish, people give up, people lose restraint, He says in verse 18 of Proverbs 29. I read this somewhere years ago, and I used it when I was speaking to young people in high school about setting goals, and I don't know where I found it, but I like it. Dreams make being awake worthwhile. Dreams make being awake worthwhile. I want to tell you, I have dreams in my life that I have experienced. I had a dream of starting Teen Challenge that you're going to be going to a banquet with. I pulled on a piece of property there in Moore County, and my car on the little road going in had to push down trees that were about a half inch in diameter just to be able to pull on the property because it had overgrown the little road going in, dirt road. And I pushed all these things down so I can get a peek at what the property looked like. Then I backed over those trees and backed out of there. Kind of scratched up my bumper a little bit, really, actually. I went to the courthouse a few miles away, found out who owned it. Went all the way to Washington, D.C. without even calling the man to see if he's home. I said, great, I can't believe I did that. Knocked on his door at 9 o'clock at night. I said, yeah, who are, this is, are you who I think you are? I'm, I'm Reverend Hicks. I, log, I looked at your property yesterday, and uh, we need to start a teen challenge center. He said, what's that? I explained to him about Nikki Cruz and the cross and the switchblade and told him about the drug treatment around the country. People are getting help. Pretty soon he teared up. I mean, after a little bit, he said, you can have it for 100000 I said, well, I don't have 100000 on me, but I do have $100. I said, if I give you 100000 tonight, you're going to be paying all these taxes. Let's just do a lease purchase option. That's the best way to go. So we seal the deal with $100. Now, that was the fun part. Come on, we drove on the property and pushed down these bushes and, and went to Washington to meet the man that owned it, gave him $100, talked him into selling it to me. That's, that's a great part. Come on, say, that sounds so exciting. Until I had to go to court for six months. Huh? Uh, seven acres. Oh, no, excuse me, 31 acres, excuse me, but the second acre is where they put the buildings at, seven acres where the buildings were. 31 acres, yeah, with a lake on it. And, um, but the, I don't, the part that you don't know is the, the, the laboring, when you, we started, we got a permit, and then some people in the county close by us tried to stop us. They had in, political influence, and they took us to court for six months trying to stop us. We'd already started working out there, already started clearing. We, we already started working on the buildings that were there. So we had a permit, but they were trying to rescind it. Well, we was in court for six months. And the judge kind of saw through what was going on because they, were, they had given us the permit, but then they, they, people that had a little bit of influence went to the city, the, 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 the county people, and said, we, we don't think, that you need to take that thing back from them. And the judge got a little bit angry when he saw what was going on, and he ruled in our favor and made those people pay for the, for the legal bills. So, you know, God, one victory at a time, one victory here, one victory there. God has dreams and visions for people to do things. It may not be always be easy, but Jacob had a God-given dream, and he declared that dream. 
before I go to that next point, David, Young Gay David Show. He used to go by David. He used to go by Young Gay Show, and then he added his name. Uh, his other name was David Show. The largest at that time, the largest church in the world in South Korea. And I, I, I met with him in uh, Canada at a meeting. And then I spent time with him in an airport. And, and somebody asked him, how do you count how many million members that you have? They said they, t they count tithe envelopes. That's how they know how many people they have. Because everybody gives everybody. It's the largest church in the world at that time. It may still be. But here's what Dr. Cho said. I love these words. He says, I pray, God say, and I obey. That's real simple. Come on. I pray, God say, and I obey. Now, you don't have to be a Georgia Tech engineer to figure that one out, right? I pray, John, he say, and I just get up and obey. Somebody say amen. amen. It's not complicated. Just let him speak to you. And then get up and be obedient. Joseph declared his God-given dream in verse 37.5. He declared his dream to his brothers and they hated him all the more. Well, the point of that is you may want to use a little bit of wisdom when you start sharing your heart with people. But at the same time, don't be afraid to declare your dreams and your vision. You have to. Jesus said, if you have faith as of a mustard seed, you shall say, I must say say, you shall say unto this mountain, listen, you have to declare your faith. You have to declare your dream and vision. You got to speak it. One old minister in Fayetteville that was a Assembly of God minister. He told these pastors, he said, if you don't start telling and speaking out what God's put in your heart, he said, it's like winking at a pretty girl in the dark. You're the only one that knows you did it. You got to declare. You got to speak forth what God has put in your heart. And there's another principle that I have lived by. As you declare your dreams and visions, resources will always gravitate to, to the dream and to the vision. But you got to declare it first. If you don't speak it, nobody knows anything about it. But you have to speak it with wisdom. With the favor of his father and with the sharing of his dream, it cost Joseph many relationships. In verse 4, they hated him. Verse 11 gives the real truth, though. They envied him. The sin of envy. Now, I've got to give you another quote by Dr. David Cho. Yonge David Cho. I love this one. He says, tell me your dreams and I will tell you your future. Now, he's not talking about fortune telling. No. He's just saying, when you tell me what God has put on your heart and what God has put in your heart, I'll tell you what your future's going to be. When you start declaring the things of God, when you start declaring in faith what God has put in your heart, you kind of know where your future's going. I love that. You must have a dream and a vision. You must declare that dream and that vision. Marilyn Hickey, I remember her teaching over the years. I love this quote from her. Provision follows vision. Provision follows vision. Can I say it one more time? Provisions follow visions. She says, walk in the vision and dream that takes God at his word. Let me say it again. Marilyn Hickey says, walk in the vision or the dream that takes God at his word. How many wants to put God on the spot? Put him on the spot. He don't mind. He can take it. 
Now, the third part of this, Joseph, only 17 now, suffered because of his declared dream. Hated by his brothers, unbelievable rejection, almost killed, stripped down and cast into a pit, sold into slavery, lied about by a powerful woman, put into prison because of the lie, and seemingly forgotten. Sometimes when you're out there doing something for the Lord and you've got a dream and a vision, you may have to fight the good fight of faith. And most likely you will. In 1 Peter, which is not on your notes, you may have a little place at the top of your paper there. 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7 says, Heaviness, trials, testing for a short period of time. And verse 7 of 1 Peter 1, The trial of your faith, more precious than gold. Now, I'll tell you this. When I was going through some stuff trying to get Teen Challenge going, it didn't seem like gold to me. It didn't seem that way at all. I was fighting the devil and fighting people and fighting the courts and fighting everybody. It didn't seem like gold. But 1 Peter 1, 7, the trial of your faith more precious than gold. Man, if you have a dream, if you have a vision, if you're going to endure it, there's going to be some testing involved. You've got to be prepared for it. Peter is saying that the testing, there's always a little bit of an element of mystery to it. There's always a little mystery on why this testing is the way it is. Because he says, don't think it's some strange thing. Listen, Peter is saying that testing sometimes is kind of a strange thing. It's kind of a mystery. But Peter is also saying, don't focus on the mystery. Focus on the grace of God. Because he'll get you through it. He'll get you through it. But look here now in your notes. But Joseph's greatest trial. Now, it was one thing to be hated by his brothers. Unbelievable rejection. Almost killed. Stripped and cast into a pit. All that that happened to him. But I believe this was the greatest test to him of all. And it may be your greatest test. And it's this. Joseph's greatest trial may be the seeming contradiction of the Word of God he loved and trusted, and whereby this, all the circumstances in Joseph's life was just the opposite of what God had put in his heart. Come on. Come on. The greatest trial that Joseph faced was not so much being hated by his brothers, not so much being thrown into a pit, not so much put in leg irons, which the psalmist said he was, but the contradiction, the, the seeming contradiction, the circumstances were just so opposite of what God had put in his heart. What's going on, God? I mean, want to cry out, what's going on here, God? What are you doing? That was the test for Joseph. And Joseph's account was found in Psalms, Psalms 105, 17 through 19. Even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters, he was laid in irons until the time the word came. And listen to this now. The word of the Lord tried him. Now, I'm going to tell you, it's one thing to deal with, with opposition. But when you are going through something that seems what God put in your heart seems to be opposite of what's going on, that can be a tough test. Because Joseph loved the Word of God. Joseph trusted the Word of God. And when everything is going on, there seems to be a contradiction to the Word of God. Now, that's a test. And that's a hard one. And some of us, if not all of us, have been there. 
And there's the key verse of 105 of Psalms, verse 19. The word of the Lord came, and the word of the Lord tried him. But I have good news. Joseph endured his God-given dreams. I believe God so wanted to whisper to him so many times, now, now, now Joseph, don't worry. This is how it's going to end. But he dare not, because Joseph was still in school. Now, so many times, God would like to just, oh, you know, the Father's heart. He would like to just, oh, I, I want to let them know it's going to be okay. But sometimes he holds back. Peter, Jesus said to Peter, oh, Satan's going to sift you. I'm not going to be writing you any letters. There ain't going to be no love letters. But he's going to sift you. He's going to sift you. And Satan did to Peter. I believe God so wanted to tell him, don't worry, this is how it's going to end. But you're still in school, Joseph. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 22, you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth, come on, but he that endureth, say it with me, but he that endureth, that's the key. Job 23.11 in the Living Bible says, I have stayed in God's path, following His steps, not turned aside. Listen, Mary and Hickey also said, don't forget in the dark what God once told you in the light. Don't forget in the dark what God once told you in the light. And when you're in the dark, just try to keep moving forward in God's way and God's steps, even though it may be very difficult. Look, Galatians 6, 9, let us not get tired of doing what's right. For in due time, in due season, we shall reap. And the Phillips translation says, the ultimate harvest, if you just don't give up. And that's what we heard this morning, Kim, from the Lord. For in due season, don't, don't get tired of doing what's right. For in due time, in due season, you'll reap the ultimate harvest. Don't give up. To endure means to last. Psalm 72, 12, he shall deliver the needy. 72, 12 of Psalms. The endure means to suffer patiently. Matthew 24, 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, hold out, stand firm, shall be saved. Matthew 24, 13. And Genesis 33, 14 says we have to bear up. We have to be sustained or bear up under something in this endurance. And I like Hebrews eleven twenty seven, For he, Moses, endured as seeing him who is invisible. Come on. Moses endured as seeing him who is invisible. God's, Joseph saw his fulfillment of his God-given dream. The day came when it all made sense to Joseph. Listen to this now. It all made sense. And then during some of that time, it, it just seemed like it didn't make any sense at all. How many things have happened in your life that just did not make any sense at all? But give a little time. Stop complaining and start, start trusting God. Don't complain, but trust God. Because it's all going to make sense. God brought everything together. He brought everything together. Every word and every promise was fulfilled to the letter. How quickly things had changed. Within one hour, Joseph had gone from being a prisoner to being the second most powerful man in Egypt. And Egypt was the most powerful nation on the face of the earth at that time. Come on. How about say one hour? One hour. Come on. One hour. How quickly things changed. 
Another way of saying it, an ex-convict becomes a senator in one hour. That's pretty quick. I've never seen an election go that quick. Now, in Egypt, advisors were called senators in Hebrew. They were called senators or advisors, be the same thing. So, within one hour, it all made sense. Joseph had gone from being a prisoner to the second most powerful man, all for God's eternal plan. God still speaks. Always through his word. He speaks through dreams and visions and even it's supposed to be increased in the last days. He speaks through circumstances of life. But we go to the love chapter of 1 Corinthians 13. The love chapter. How many know about the love chapter? He says, Bear, love bears all things. One translation I like on that bears up under anything bears up under anything believes always believes the best when you're walking in God's love and walking with the Lord you don't have to be walking with a critical eye all the time you can always believe the best you can always bear up under things and then he says hopes all things are always hopeful one translation puts it and endures all things another translation again endures without limits endures without limits repeat that with me endures without limits endures without limit oh god i don't think i can take it anymore i said god i don't think i can take another day i said you can endure unlimited by his love working in your life perfect love cast out all fear amen who bears up under anything, who always believes the best, always hopeful, and endures without limits. Endurance we're talking about. And the last but not least, Williams' translation, I, I wrote it down, and Williams' translation says, he, he gives us power to endure everything. He gives us power to endure everything. And then the last sentence, Joseph's bones <laughs> were taken. He made it to the promised land. His bones, that is, were buried in the promised land. Right where you and I were, Mr. Tony. That's where he's at today. Buried in the promised land. Joseph had a God-given dream. Joseph declared his dream. Joseph at 17 suffered because of his declared dream. Joseph endured his God-given dream. And Joseph saw the fulfillment of his God-given dream. In one hour, everything changed. I don't know what that hour will be for this church or for your life, but we're, we're, we're kind of holding on here. We're kind of believing for the future. We've got the place all fixed up, and we're trying to believe for a miracle here. But I want to tell you, in one hour, things can change in your life and in this church. One hour. When you feel like it's time to give it up. When you feel like it's time, we just can't go another day in your life. What's going on in your life? God, I just don't think I can make it another day. You may just need to wait for one more hour. Because you don't know God's plan. He'd like to tell you everything. But you're, maybe you're still, the testing is the gold thing. And you've got to wait until he sees what he's doing. I wanted to put Joseph's picture on here, but I had to put a guy in a bicycle race and a picture on the front of your thing. But I wish they'd have taken a picture of Joseph and would have saved it for us. But I guess they didn't have cameras back then. 
and I would love to have a picture of young Joseph. He probably looked a lot like Aaron, or looked like Jaron, or looked like some young person like Maya. Some young person. You're almost there. You're getting there. Just a few years away. You'll be there before your mom and dad want you to be. But uh, it's getting close. Think about it, Maya. This guy's 17, and all that he went through and became a mighty type of Christ. One scholar claimed he found a hundred things of types of Joseph to Christ. Listen, you can endure God-given dreams in your life. This church can endure what God has if we can just be faithful, which we're trying to be. It all can change in one hour. Let's stand together. Endure your dreams. I heard that on the Lee County line. I had to do all the work to put it together, but I heard that word during your dreams. Be not weary in well-doing. Come on up here. We're going to come up here a little, have a closing time together. We've got, we're 12 o'clock. We're almost ready to eat, but we'll close together up here real quick. How great is our God. bite nobody. You're not going to bite me, are you, Jerry? You're not going to, I know you're not going to bite me. I know you are. I don't think you've ever done it before. I don't think so. Come on in. Come on, folks. Come on. How great is our God. Sing it. Sing with me. How great is our God. So all will see how great and trial to look at it as gold. That's hard to do. Peter says it is. So we're going to have to take it for the, the truth. Now we can endure. We can endure anything by God's help and His grace in our lives. And don't focus on the mystery of testing. But focus on the grace of God who is behind the testing see us through, who will help us through. Amen. Amen. We have Jerry's brother in the hospital, Josh. They're trying to figure out what's going on. They think it could be uh, gallstones, but they're not real sure. They need, a, we need, they need an answer for that. We need to find some answer for it. So let's pray for Josh. He's a fine young man with a beautiful family. Let's uh, any other requests that you want to offer before we close? Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's Britt. Britt is his name. Brent. Brent. Josh, Brent, anyone else? Well, let's also remember Tony and Rose and what they're doing in her ministry and his ministry and both their ministries. And let's pray for our church and pray for the uh, Linda King's family that are not far around the corner from us. We told them we would continue to pray for them and we, we want to do that. And let's just pray that God would do some miracles here in this church. Help us reach people. You've got some friends. Let's pray that God will help you to maybe be able to reach out to them and be able to help and touch their lives 
and you can do it through the church here and through God's help helping you to do that. Praise the Lord. I believe God is able, don't you? I believe that he's able. Amen. George, would you come and close us in our prayer? The scripture tells us, Lord, that uh, nothing is impossible to you. And it's because of that that we're, we bring our concerns and hurts and hurts. To you, Lord, because you can move mountains. You can heal the sick. You can mend broken hearts. You can lift the lowly. And Father, all of that for your glory. And Father, we give you thanks for each and every one that's here today. Uh, we pray for Jerry's son. Hospital, Lord, we pray for a, a quick healing and mending of his body. We pray for Linda's King's family, Lord, that you would draw them to you. We pray for this brother of the teacher at Lee Christian, Lord, that you would touch him and bring a miracle. Bring a miracle into their lives, dear Lord that you may be glorified. And we thank you for this dear brother and sister that has come today to report the good news and the good work that's taking place on the highways uh, of our state, dear Lord. We just ask your bless, continued blessings upon Tony and Rose, Lord, as they minister near and far in your behalf, Lord. And we just ask, dear God, that uh, you would just pro you provide for them as, as they continue to reach out to those that are on the highways. Father, we thank you for this time that we can come. We thank you for your presence and for speaking to us today. Lord, I just pray we take that word in our heart and cherish it and know that you're in control yes. of all things, dear Lord. And uh, our church stands upon the solid rock and we stand ready, dear Lord, uh, to do your work and your will. And we thank you for each and every one here. Bless this time of fellowship and bless the food that's been prepared, and those that have, the hands that have prepared it, Lord as we gather together in Christ's blessed name. Amen. I want to